Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Shooting Show. On this week's episode we join two pigeon shooting experts, Jeff Garrod and Tom Payne. Then we go to the air gunning show where we're after some rats on a new bit of permission. But first we join Jeff as he's out trying to decoy some pigeons over clover. Welcome to the shooting show. This week we're back on the pigeons. A um, little bit of a new one. Uh, we're on clover today. Uh, farm managers um, give me a ring to say there's quite a lot of pigeons hitting it. Um, we've just, well, I came to have a look yesterday. There is a few pigeons here. Um, so uh, the situation is we've got a field here. We've got two or three little fields just the other side of the road there. Um, and another field in the distance that way. Um, I've got uh, a guy who helps me out on the shoot. Um, he's on the field that way. Uh, and I've bagged off the other two little fields, trying to concentrate them on here. Um, as we sit here, we've got not a huge amount of breeze or wind, but what little breeze it is, it's, it's coming from a northeasterly direction, which as I'm, as I'm sitting here looking at you, it's coming from, from my right to left, from your left to right. Um, and we're just going to sit here for sort of 10 minutes, quarter of an hour, have a watch the situation, see if we can pick out a bit of a line, um, and then we'll go and build a hide, get the decoys out, and see what the day brings. Uh, what, what I'm doing here really, I'm just, uh, we're, we're out on the pitch. Um I'm going to be literally over the other side of this field here on another little field there. Um, I'm just bagging off this one. Um, if you can see right in the far distance there, um, it's a, one of the people who helped me on the shoot. Uh, a beater, he's going to be out there. So I'm just bagging this one off now. Hopefully keep anything off here so they'll either go that way or that way. Um, just, just a very simple method that I um, was shown by a very good friend of mine. Um, just a refuge bag. Very light, very effective. Get the wind inside it. Put the straps. Just over the bottom there, one over there. And just bring it round like that just keep the back keep, it'll keep the lightest of breezes today we haven't got much wind today the lightest of breezes I mean it's going down there now a little bit of wind and that'll just inflate again I mean, all I'm doing here is just got a, you know, nice tree. They do like to spend a lot of time sitting in the trees around here when I watch them. Um, so anything really to just try and encourage them to come down so we can get a shot off at them. So I'm just going to put the lofting poles right above us up here somewhere. Um, or maybe to the side of us there so I don't try and shoot the pole. Um, and just see what, what happens with it. It might work, it might not. I think I might put them in there somewhere because that'll 
save me shooting the pole. See what, see what it does, it might work, it might not. I'll just go and uh, park the truck up. I'll park it that way in the woods just there, so hopefully that won't interfere with anything that's coming round, and then uh, we'll come back and see what happens. Right. Yeah, it just went, just went dead again. Um, and we just sort of wondered why, and I rung my mate up, and basically there's, there's a little field, little triangle field near the road. Um, and because he's not getting much shooting, um, they've actually started to go down on there. So uh, he's just had, a, he just had a shot towards that direction. He's just put a massive group up. So they've all dispersed into the far corners of the world. So now we've got to sit here and just see if they come back again. Fingers crossed. Shot. Yeah, here we come, here we come. It's going to get shot out, whatever. They're one or two looking, though. My little theory here, I know people might look at me and think I'm crazy, but I've always had a theory start of the day when you get a group like that there's probably five or six hundred pigeons just gone over one or two have swung around look like they're going to come in the decoys but my little theory is if you start banging away at those you just educate five or six hundred pigeons as to where you are and when they're not decoying very well perhaps that's not a good thing to do so i'll just let them go past there's another big heap coming behind them there look um, so i'm just I'm just milling about around the field there's, there's a lot just gone over us um, you know, at best you can get up, maybe get, get two, three if you're lucky, four if you're fluky. Um, so the best thing to do is just leave them, have them mix round, let them have a fly round, land a belt, let them go off on their own, and hopefully later on in the day when they come back, they'll come back in a smaller group. Get a customer here, Richard. Definitely. Definitely. Keep my hands warm with a hot coffee instead of me barreled. Sit. Good boy. Leave it. Sit.
Good boy, Drake. Go on, here, here. Good boy, come on, come Drake, Drake, here. Good boy, leave it, leave it. Easy with the elite. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> on the telly. Yeah, here we come, here we come, here we come. And again, and again. Out there, here they are. Down. They're still out there. No, they're still out there. That one there, look. There's another one there now. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's bringing another one in there, look. That one there, look. Oh, you're eating the deeks. The deeks. Well, it's getting a little bit more encouraging now. Um, we've been here now literally a couple of hours now. It's, 12, it's just struck 12 o'clock and all we had for the first couple of hours was pigeons going over us, miles high, big groups. I mean, they were, you could see they were looking at the pattern, you know, and we were literally on the floor trying not to be seen. Um, but as the, as the day has gone on a bit, um, I think there's, there's another couple there that's just beginning to come in and now. So, things are just beginning to look up a little bit now um, and it's it, it feels now everything that's coming over onto the field from our left hand side seem to be coming onto the field seeing the decoys and making an effort now so as the day gets on and I think they're getting a little bit more hungrier um, I think you know we could be hopefully in for a sort of reasonable afternoon now but the morning's been hard work Them two up there, look, the height of them two there. There's another one there, look, look. They're pigeons, they are. Oh, 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 that's... Focus through that one. Huh? Focus through that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pigeon. Swung around the back of us. 
wasn't even thinking about looking in, so I thought, well, I'll give it a go. And uh, knocked it out of the sky. <laughs> Sudden look. Oh, here we go. I hope that one was caught. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Bangers are still working. Well, that's the end of another day. Not quite sure how to describe today. Um, hard, frustrating. Um, pigeons certainly didn't play ball. Um, you know, when we got here, we, we, we looked at the places while I was bagging this field off this morning, there was a nice lot of pigeons here. My mate was over the corner, over the way there. He put a lot of pigeons off his field. We went on the field behind. You can just see it in the distance there, behind the yew trees. Um, and when we got there, nice lot of pigeons there. We put them up, we watched them, thought where we got the flight line right, got set up, first couple of hours, was very hard. I don't didn't realise pigeons could fly that high, um, but we kept seeing signs that kept us interested. That you know suddenly the odd one would decoy, so we stuck it out the next couple of hours, and we had a few decoys. Started a decoy, so yeah, but then all of a sudden it went completely blank. Never saw a pigeon in the sky for probably the best part of an hour. Rung me mate up. Um, that, and what they'd done is they'd snuck into a field between us. Um, he just had a shot uh, and put them up and there was a big heat got up. And from then onwards, um, I got uh, someone to put a set of rope bangers up in the spot to keep them off there. And then this afternoon, we've just had ones and two, odd ones and twos, literally odd ones and twos. But on some, some sort of like the good thing about it was what did come over started to decoy in. Um, but it's been very hard and very frustrating. Finished up with 34 um, and not the sort of day I was expecting. But as we all know, that is pigeon shooting. So, you know, I'm happy to be out here. I'm happy to help protect the crops in whatever way, shape or form. We go from clover to rape now, with Tom Payne and Ian Adams hoping to build a bag from the marauding pigeons. Hey, my name's Tom Payne and welcome to the shooting show. Uh, today we're on my mate's farm in Oxfordshire, um, Ian Adams. Uh, fortunately now the season's finished, uh, it means that we can actually get onto the rape. Um, you're going to see the pigeon trailer that Ian designed uh, a couple of years ago, which makes access for us as a mobile hide uh, very straightforward and we're hoping um, there have been quite a few pigeons uh, on his rape. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed, we get stuck into them this afternoon.
pigs. We've got basically three parishes of pigeons on this mm. on this 300 plus acre block, um, and hopefully we've dispersed this lot here. Uh, the gamekeeper is sitting up in another wood, um, just moving them around. He'll do he'll do a little bit of good, but uh, probably not as much as we would here. Um, if the wind gets up next uh, next week, we'll go into a different parish. Yeah, go again. And go and uh, yeah, try and just split them up a bit. It's more to do with splitting them up. When they're in a great big horde, that's when they really do cause damage. Um, yeah, so we were obviously discussing earlier you know, the huge importance of protecting your winter crops from, from, from your pigeons. Obviously, you, you struggled during the, you know, with your, with your shoot. Obviously, you've got to... Yeah, you can't you can't do it during the during the season, so you have to use non-lethal, and they don't, they don't really work quite as well as actually killing them. Uh, yeah, we've we've put spinners out uh, with the intention of keeping them away from the crop. Um, they, they work to a point, but only probably about 30, 40 yards away from uh, where the actual spinner is. Uh, we're sitting on a patch here of probably just over 300 acres of oil cedar ape. Uh, so it's a vast area to try and cover, plenty of woodland all the way around. Um, we're always going to have we're always going to have a problem with pigeons. What's quite nice, I suppose, is we've just changed drills, so we're on a direct drill. Uh, so we're on last year's tram lines. So the fertilizer spinner is going to come out on Monday. That'll be the earliest I've ever taken one out this year. We've had a, a sort of a dry dry end of January, uh, which the growing points they are just starting to come. So. Um, the weather's warming up, and we'll uh, and we'll try and defeat the pigeons by getting the crop growing faster. So, uh, just having a quick tidy up. Um, certainly not as fast as I thought it was going to be. We've lost the wind slightly, uh, which is causing them. They're coming quite high on us, um, and not really wanting to commit properly. Uh, which can make things a little bit on the old frustrating side. We've nearly completely lost the wind, haven't we, Ian? I just said. Um, which has really lifted them up and making, they're not really committed now, they're not coming at us like they want to, to decoy. Um, still stuff coming out to feed, but they just don't really want to commit to us. But we're killing some good stuff. Um, and hopefully we'll have a few more. How long it's going to go on for, I'm not too sure, but I certainly get another hour out of it, I would have thought. Yep. Um, but yeah, classic day on winter rape. Stressful. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what am I shooting with? I'm shooting with my Pratsy MX12 32 inch barrel, choked 5.8 to 5.8, as per normal. Not today. Uh, cartridge choice with the whole cartridge, so the high and extremes 32 gram fives uh, which fortunately do the job and I think Ian has brought out Breath of Silver new, Pigeon yeah Breath of Silver Pigeon uh, 20 ball with 32 inch barrels first time Ian's shot it at pigeons and slightly different for you testing <laughs> testing testing will be a nice word for it um, I think they take quite a lot of getting used to if you've spent most of your shooting career, shooting 12s, and suddenly start taking pigeons on with a light. And as you can see, there is a slight height and size difference <laughs> with uh, Ian and myself. Um, so yeah, it's that controlling it and trying not to chuck it around like a wand, which is always going to be a bit of a bit of a battle. I've got a feeling on on bigger days, I have a feeling that the 12 may be re-employed. I think it might come out again. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's always always going to be a challenge. Um, when yeah, yeah. I was, I was always told a long time ago with anything to do with sporting, change when you're playing well. So cricket, 
if, if you were batting well, then you could change bats because you knew you were playing well and it wasn't the bat. If you're playing appallingly and you change bats, you don't know whether it's you or the equipment that you're using. So I was shooting quite well in the shooting season and I thought, and I've been wanting a 20 for a couple of years. Yeah. Uh, found one at uh, Banbury Gunsmiths and um, yeah, so we had to put a fair bit of extension on the, uh, on the stock. Because but, obviously you're... Because I'm a bit bigger than most. <laughs> <laughs> As uh, I say, looking down at you. <laughs> No, you kill some good birds with it, it just takes a bit of... It just takes a bit of thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. Certainly, so, certainly yeah, not it, like it, when you're with your 12. No, but it, I like it, it comes up well. It, it does everything I think it should. A challenging day. Look, Steve's now out. So Steve's um, Ian's head keeper and has popped out to run his spaniels. It's clearly a tough time up and down the country for pigeon shooters at the moment, but we'll be joining Jeff Garrod and Tom Payne in the next coming episodes. But next, we join Mr. Andrew Moriarty, as he's on that new bit of permission with a serious rat infestation. With the landowner quite keen to get rid of them, let's see what kit Andrew has brought with him to get the job done. Hello guys, welcome to the Air Gun Show. I'm Andrew Moriarty. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Um, I'm just gonna run you through the kit I'm gonna be using in tonight's video. This is the Stoger XM1 ballpup. It's an absolute blinding little ballpup. Really affordable. I've kitted it out with a Sightmark Wraith 4K Max to keep the noise down. Not that you need it, but this does a crazy job of keeping it whisper quiet. This is the Eagle Vision Sigma 4 moderator or silencer, whichever you want to call it. It's got a 11 shot magazine, which pops in there. It's a side cocking mechanism. It's extremely light and manageable. So that's the kit I'm going to be using tonight. So let's get on and let's get some ratting done. Well guys, I've arrived at the new permission, a bit excited, don't know what to expect, it could be good, it could be rubbish, who knows, but we've had the farmer ask us to come onto his property and clear some rats. So this is going to be the first time I meet the gentleman, so I'm not going to do that on camera because I have to keep this place discreet. I'm going to have a little walk around with him, I would have liked to do it in the day, but he was so busy, this is the only time he can do it. I'm going to get my kit done. Then I'm going to go to the problematic areas he's going to point out and then we'll clear the numbers of rats wherever he points us in the right direction. So I'm going to go off and meet this gentleman and I'll bring you back in a little bit when I'm set up. This is the magazine for the Stoger XM1 bullpup. So the way you load it, you have the shiny see-through plastic face in you. You rotate it. You spin it over. You drop your pellet skirt first in backwards. Pop your finger over the hole. And then you just move it round. Popping the pellets in nose first then. This is a 11 shot magazine. Can be a bit fiddly, but the magazine rotates and fires lovely and cycles very nice when it's in the gun. Now 
and so on till you finish the magazine. The pellets I'm using are the H&N's uh, light 9.57. The thermal I'm using is the Pulsar XM22 but fingers crossed um, I'm going to uh, get a, an upgrade um, and get a thermal that can record because I do miss a lot of footage for you guys not to see when I'm around these places of the rat activity with this one it doesn't record so fingers crossed in the next couple of weeks I'll be able to uh, go off and purchase a new thermal to bring you something extra in the video so you can see exactly how many rats are on each property right guys I've just spoken to the landowner and he said this is the first location I need to have a look at in here there's a cattle on the left there's cattle on the right so he said either side you do get rats in there but I probably won't take the shot if they're too close to the cattle or it could present a danger but he said focus on the center of the barn where the straw is he said they're running in the straw they're running in the pallets he said there's plenty in there so let's crack on and let's get behind these doors and let's see what we got well as we come into the barn you'll notice there's a few cows to the left of me and some straw bales and as we pan round to the middle, that's the main area I'll be targeted on them hay bales. There's one or two cows in the right, but the main action will be in the centre of this barn. That was a busy couple of minutes then. Good number of rats down. Um, straight as I come through the door, really busy area. I'm gonna crack on now and I'm gonna start targeting some more. Well, this place is rat heaven. I gotta be fair. I think it's gonna take me a good couple of visits to get the numbers down on you, which is good for me and good for footage, not so good for the farmer, but we'll get on top of it.
the sticks I'm using are the Primus Gen 3. I like these because they've got the coupler there that holds the legs nice and sturdy. The Gen 2 doesn't have that and on the wet surface they tend to slip. So I've, I've upgraded to the Gen 3 and they've done the trick so far. As I said, it's really difficult filming on this location because I have to be extremely discreet um, because the landowner really don't want anything being shown too much on these videos. So I'm going to just stand here. There's a little bit of rat activity. Well, the action seems to have slowed down now. It's getting a little bit late. I've got a long drive home. So I'm just gonna go around now and pick everything up. Already put himself already put himself in a bucket this one. by my head <laughs> oh that should be good on the video well guys that's it the end of the session has come there's still plenty more so we will be making a return visit here um i've told the landowner about all the rats that are stuck up on the hay bales he's going to remove them tomorrow well all i can say is thank you for watching the air gun show until the next time guys please stay safe and uh, look after yourselves and don't forget hit that notification for the next episode of the air gun show We'll be joining Andrew again as he sets his sights on squirrels next time. But for this week's episode, that's all we've got. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want to see more. And if you're not a member of Basque, make sure you join. My name's Chris Castle and this has been The Shooting Show. If you aren't a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.